so friends uh, in the last lecture we have concluded about various basic characteristic feature of living organism <coughs> now we are moving ahead with the diversity in the living world now if i talk about world diversity diversity refers to total number and total types of the organisms which are present on the earth right so cumulatively whatsoever kind of varieties of organisms that we can find around us is cumulatively termed as biodiversity bio that is living organism and diversity that is variation or different kinds now why this biodiversity is important to us <clears throat> as if we are concerning about the life biodiversity is a life and that statement is our life that is life of human being now humans are in the uh, 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 if we want to learn these uh, idea human beings are definitely straight away concerned with all the uh, uh, rest of the species which are present on the earth and that is why biodiversity is life and that is our life so we are totally depend on our surrounding all the environment environmental factor and living organisms as well for our sustenance of life so that's the importance of biodiversity for us moving ahead now as far as the number is concerned average number of the species which are described till now is 1.7 to 1.8 million total on the earth amongst them majority of the species which are identified are insects so in insects plays major role in diversity of species major uh, number of the species most number of the species are of insects rest of them are less than 50% and insects alone are more than 50% so that's the importance of insects in biodiversity now what can be the reason behind that reason behind that is insects are the first organisms who have started their life on land free moving and first time the organism has got the walking leg so they have spreaded all around the world later on whatsoever number of the species have evolved they have uh, they have depended on insects for their food so everyone whatsoever new species is generated evolved they are the enemy of insects so insects if they want to survive they need to increase their number and diversity and that is the reason why insects are more in number right so this is the reason why insects are spreaded and found to be most uh, number into the uh, diversity <coughs> the next point is uh, the definition of taxonomy or systematics now biodiversity has to be defined or has to be studied within a particular limit because we have n number of species for example 1.7 to 1.8 billion which cannot be studied together no one can study together this kind of biodiversity so that we are actually mentioning them 
into a particular scientific manner. We are arranging them in a particular types of uh, system, designary system and scientific system and that system is not else but the taxonomy. So, each and every organism are having particular type of characters and we are supposed to consider the characters. The two aspects what we are supposed to consider are number one similarity and number two difference. So, based on similarity or differences, we are making them into the different groups. We divide them into the different groups. If they are sharing a common character with the similarity, we are need to place them in a one group or if they are not sharing the common character, they are different in their character we are not placing them. So, we are making the other group for them. So, we separate them with a group. So, that is why it is said that based on the similarity and differences of characters, they are grouped, they are divided. So, if we go through the definition of the taxonomy, it is study of identification, classification and nomenclature of an organism. So, it includes various steps what we are going to learn into the next upcoming slides. So, taxonomy is actually a study, right? It is a study of identification, classification and nomenclature. Why it is said to be systematic? Because it is part with a particular system, with a scientific system that is why it is also said to be systematic. Now term systematic or term taxonomy and system of taxonomy are given by so many different contributed by several different scientists which are given on the top. First of all, term taxonomy was given by A. P. D. Condole. The founder of taxonomy is Aristotle. First time this arrangement has been found by Aristotle and name was given by A. P. Condole. Ready? Father of taxonomy that is scientific definition or scientific division is Linnaeus and father of Indian taxonomy is Santa Pau, right? So, these are few names what we are supposed to remember uh, as far as NEAT is concerned, right? So, uh, I request you to uh, take a screenshot of this slide so that you can make your own notes. <coughs> the uh, definition of uh, systematic which is given here systematics word is systema which is latin which means systematic arrangement now what is this system considering evolutionary relationship between any of the two species of organism right two different organism of different species they are supposed to consider the evolutionary relation they are supposed to uh, supposed to compare both of them. Are they similar or different? Similar means they must be having a particular type of relationship between these two organisms. So, carefully each and every individual has to be identified. Uh, uh, each and every character of them has to be studied. If you see the, uh, the diagrams or photographs which are given here, uh, the ladies which are uh, on the left side, they are carefully studying these characters of an organism if you see right and if you see uh, at the right side 
amen which is also doing the same thing and this is the specimen which is collected and preserved for comparative study so systematic is nothing but it is uh, uh, it is uh, arrangement grouping particular organism by considering the evolutionary relationship so you are supposed to uh, consider their similarity or difference and that is the evolutionary relationship right so that's the meaning of systematics again i request you to take the screenshot of this slide now here comes the master linnaeus a father of taxonomy right he actually written the scientific description in a book named systema nature right and that book was published by linnaeus written and published by linnaeus so total scientifically description of biodiversity was first time published in 1735 and that is why he considered as a father of taxonomy these slide also you are supposed to uh, take the screenshot so that i can move ahead now when we have gone through the definition of taxonomy we have gone through a various steps so it includes these taxonomical process includes four basic steps number 1 characterization number 2 identification number 3 classification and number 4 nomenclature now it is not a study now we are talking about process of classification or taxonomy for an example if a scientist or research person is into the field for the research purpose he or she for example it is a group of young uh, researcher which are into the field they found a particular type of unique plant with a with a, a, a peculiar characteristic features they don't know what that plant is this man may have found the turtle which was first time seen by him so they don't know what is that plant or what is that animal so basically first step what they are supposed to take is the characterization whatsoever specimen you are finding into the research field maybe ocean maybe a forest maybe grassland you are supposed to see their characters first their appearance first whether it is looks like a plant or an animal that is the first thing what we are supposed to identify right so after trying to consider their characters whether it is having uh, characters like plant or character like animals first thing we have dis uh, we have uh, identified them is whether it is animal or plant right for an example it is the plant now we are going in further for the identification process which plant it is we have n number of the plants these people for example uh, the lower group what we are uh, seeing observing uh, uh, on the left side group of 
they have found a plant now they don't know what the plant is it may be a possibility that some other person may have noted down about that plant so they are supposed to refer the reference books with all the characters of the plant what they have found in the book are they able to find the same plant or not that is called identification right so into the reference they are supposed to identify that plant whether it is given into the books or not right if yes then it has to classify them that it is supposed to be placed here into this uh, group if it is not there if they could not be able to find that plant in entire reference books various reference books then it means it is a new species which is found by them and then they are supposed to name the new plant and that process is called nomenclature nomenclature is giving name so these are the four basic formalities each and every researcher has to go through while they are doing the taxonomical research or where they are doing the classification i hope you are very clear about that right so please take the screenshot of this uh, slide fine uh one by one we are going to see all the characteristic feature which are given here first characteristic feature is characterization let us define all of them one by one now what is characterization according to the definition which is given here it is understanding of characters of organism right so we are about to understand the characters based on external structure internal structure structure of their cells their developmental process or if we can get their ecological information so we are just about to first understand the level or number of characters of a particular organism what we have found ready so this is the definition of characterization so that's first step of classification or taxonomy i request you to take the screenshot of this slide now let us talk about the second step which is identification and definition of identification is what it is the correct description of an organism so that the further naming is possible right so correct description we are supposed to find it from various references what i have told you earlier right please take the screenshot of the slide again now comes the classification the third definition now it is grouping of organism into convenient categories if they are found into the reference book then you can place them at a particular point or particular group based on their characters so it is called classification classifying them into a particular group so that's the definition of the classification please take the screenshot and the last definition is of nomenclature now what nomenclature means it is standardization of giving names of the organism so that organism is known by same name all over the world 
Now, why this is necessary? Because as far as taxonomy is concerned, it is worldwide single and unique process of giving name of an organism. Why it is required? Because for an example, if I am talking about the mango which is given here, in our Savarashtra, we used to see in Gujarati Keri, right? But in Hindi, it is something else. In English, it is something else. In Marathi, something else, maybe. So, local language and national language, regional language and international language, all are having different name, all may be having different name. So, for example, person from local person, right, from uh, Savarashtra or Gujarat is going to, uh, for example, France and say, I want carry. So, nobody will understand about carry. So, that is why all have considered that species name must be so unique and must be universal throughout the world ready and that is why they have mentioned that it is standardized process of naming the organism ready so all over the world one species when it is given one name it should be considered as universal name there is no other scientific name of that particular species ready so that's called that process of giving that name is nomenclature please take the screenshot taxonomy is of three type right uh, alpha beta and omega in general now the easiest definitions are given here maybe later definitions are much more complicated so we will consider the first three definition alpha taxonomy beta taxonomy and omega taxonomy alpha taxonomy based on morphological external character only beta taxonomy based on cytological formation which kind of cells are present into that particular type of organisms omega taxonomy based on the biochemical information which kind of uh, chemicals that is um, either enzymes or hormones which are secreted or formed by a particular organism so omega taxonomy based on that right so this definition or these uh, three groups only we will consider now what includes alpha beta or gamma taxonomy based on the definition what we have studied it includes species description taxonomical key and diagnosis diagnosis that is identification and uh, what they are when we are diagnosing that right taxonomical key we will understand later on into this chapter beta taxonomy includes the identification of natural groups natural groups why because based on the cytological characters they are similar or not and gamma taxonomy includes study of evolutionary process biochemical similar kind of chemicals they are having or not they are sharing the similar type of uh, chemicals or not so that shows the evolutionary process right so these are three basic group of the taxonomy basic type of the taxonomy you are supposed to take the screenshot of this slide and uh, the scientific uh, scientists which uh, which have given these uh, three types is Turil right so Turil has divided this taxonomical group into three types please take the screenshot so that we can move ahead fine this is again types of taxonomy uh, uh, we are moving ahead of that fine <coughs> uh, Linnaeus again the father of taxonomy now the system of naming that is nomenclature we are into the last topic nomenclature right so system of naming with two basic components 
right two basic component that is why it is said to as binomial nomenclature it includes two components right and it is proposed by the linears now what they are what uh, what are the two basic components and why it is binomial nomenclature let us discuss that into the later slide take the screenshot fine if i talk about major organism which is found around us are grouped mainly into two uh, meta categories number 1 plants and number 2 animals now plants nomenclature and animal nomenclature are different uh, uh, than each other and different bodies different organizations are responsible for giving name either to the plant or to the animals for example if i talk about the plants botanical name that is name of the plant botanical names are given under the rule of international codes for botanical nomenclature that is icbn whereas animal that is zoological names are based on international codes for zoological nomenclature that is iczn so these are the two different bodies which are governing the rules and according that rule name or nomenclature should be uh, followed so name will be given according to the rule of these two uh, if a plant then according to icbn and if it is an animal then it is according to the iczn fine please take the screenshot of this slide now <clears throat> what binomial nomenclature how binomial nomenclature and what makes the binomial nomenclature that's what uh, the uh, i think last uh, discussion about uh, the binomial nomenclature now uh, <clears throat> we are supposed to follow a universal rule with reference to giving name right so which are the universal rule for binomial nomenclature there are four different types of different set of rule right first rule is what scientific name are in latin only so you should use latin word or if i want to use local name then it has to be converted into latin that is latinized and it should be in italic if it is written down right uh, with typewriter for example if you see here it is italic right this is italic so when you are typing it is into the italics but when you are handwritten them right when you are handwritten them it should be underlined here is the example right you are writing mengifera indica and you are supposed to underline them so that you, it is highlighting that it is a scientific name so this is the first rule of writing the binomial nomenclature so it should be written into the latin or latinized word and if it is printed it is italic and if it is handwritten then it is underlined separately ready it is having two component first component and second component if you see so that is rule number 2 the first word is denoting genus name and it is known as generic name and second word is denoting a species name and it is called specific epithet ready so this is generic name
and second one is specific epifet. Or in simple term, this is name of genus, this is name of species. Ready? So that is how you are supposed to remember them. So this is rule number 2. It include two component genus and species and both should be written down. Now how it can be written down? That is also a rule. So rule number 3. Genus name. So genus name start always with first capital letter right first capital letter then all the letters are small it is a rule and species name there all are small letters if you see species name all are small letters so this is rule number three for writing down the scientific name and last rule author name who given or who has given that particular name whose system you are following that is called author's name in abbreviative form you can write down at the end of the biological name for an example you are following Linus Linear, sorry, system. So L I double N is for linear. So it is short form abbreviation of linear. So you are following rule of the linear system of the linear, and that is how it has been denoted at the last, at the end of the uh, biological nomenclature or scientific name. So first is genus name. Second is species name and third is author's name. Sometimes one more name is added, right? Subspecies name. So, for example, uh, if it is a uh, scientific name of mango, it is Mengifera indica. If you know the scientific name of human, it is Homo sapiens, but latest formulated scientific name of humans are human species species, sorry, uh, Homo sapiens sapiens. So sapiens is further uh, added. So it is subspecies name, right? So genus species and subspecies. So this is how sometimes when the complication is getting bigger, better, deeper, then subspecies name at the end can be added. But only with few species uh, are with this kind of nomenclature. Ready? Now, if I talk about the diversity of living organism and nomenclature, uh, these four basic categories, number one, identification, uh, characterization, then identification, classification and nomenclature are the four basic steps of the, uh, of the taxonomy. And that is where I am ending this lecture, this session and we are meeting ahead into the next lecture with the system of uh, definition of species or how species are getting defined, meaning of species and categoriz categorization of the taxonomical uh, arrangement. Right? So, I will see you then, take care and have a nice time.